Now this is some really original sci-fi. I bought myself a ticket for Vesper a month or two ago, and I ended up in one of the first showings with a question and answer from the filmmakers hosted by Ryan Johnson of The Last Jedi and Knives Out fame, and many other things. Wow, wow. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome back to M-Cubed. I am your host, Harris, and welcome back to Sidetrek. That's right, I'm a partial host of the Sidetrek channel now. So we're gonna be doing movie reviews over on both M-Cubed and Sidetrek now. And today we are back with another kick it or skip it, this time over the very original sci-fi film, Vesper. So in a ticket or skip it, we go over four questions, and in answering those four questions, we figure out whether you should get a ticket, you should skip it, or you should get a ticket, but have a little bit of trepidation going into that movie. So without further ado, let's do further. So our first question is, was the film itself Fulfilling. I think this film does provoke your mind to think because it's such a rich world that has been built. I'm a sucker for some world building, but this doesn't take away from any character story at all. This is such a heavily character driven story that just builds upon the world that is at the character's feet. It's really, really meticulously and well done with the crafting of this world, the technologies. The fauna is maybe my favorite part of this movie. I'm raised from the swamp, really the marshes, and no, there was nothing like this back where I'm from, but that very rudimentary nature kind of taking back over. It was familiar in an odd way. I really enjoyed it and I found this film extremely fulfilling. So that brings me into question number two. Were the characters arcs in this film fulfilling? Let's start with the daughter and the father duo that lead the movie. So first up we have Raffaella Chapman playing the title character of Vesper. And she does wonderful. I don't think I've ever seen her in anything before, but she looks like she could have came right out of Game of Thrones or something like that, because she's a young actress. And for a young actress to have this well acted and performed of a role, it's a testament to their ability in their craft when they can do a performance like this at an age so young. She's excellent in this, and she brings a really nice weight and gravitas to this role, into the world. You get to delve into her mind and many other things through that, and it really enriches anything and everything brought to the screen in those moments. That brings us to Richard Brake's character, Darius, who, for the most part, is a voiceover role of a drone flying around next to Vesper. I can't really give too much away, but her father is in a certain condition, and he's kind of bedridden. The acting with that is amazing. Yes, this character's arc is the most fulfilling, I think, arc of the entire film. The guy is excellent with just being very stoic, staunch, not saying a word, literally just acting through his eyes because he's paralyzed, he's a cripple. And then the voice acting role of his is just as good, if not better at times, because you get emotions from the floating droid that's hanging out, you know? And you get that father-daughter kind of dynamic within two different ways. It's beautiful. Beautifully done. So then that brings us to Eddie Marzen's character, Darius's brother, Jonas. Kind of the leader of the town. He's kind of our villain. And, you know, there's some complications in there. If you really look at it, there he's not a very good guy, by any means. But he's doing things for survival. I would say his arc is very fulfilling. I like the way everything pans out for him, and the story really takes hold whenever he enters the screen. And, I mean, it's Eddie Marsden. This guy acts so well in anything and everything he does. Finally, that brings us to Rory McEwen's Camellia. And she kind of rounds out that main, main cast. There are a couple minor characters throughout here and there, but that is our kind of main titular for our character cast. And she does really excellent with this. There's a couple twists and turns in there. There's subtleties to it that are just amazing. And then that brings me into our third question. Did I personally enjoy this film? And I've kind of answered this one already. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. This is one of the most original sci-fi things we've had over the past few years. And that actually hurts me saying that because there are a lot of smaller budget, like very original sci-fi things going on. It doesn't expand its scope too, too much. And it doesn't necessarily try to take you out of a reality that you've been set in, like everything ever all at once. The comparison there is more so just with originality. Bruno Samper and Christina Buozite, the two directors for this film, and 
I believe Brian Clark, the writer, their originality is not as crazy per se, but just as consistent and just as well done. It is extremely meticulously crafted and you can feel that while you're walking around the world. You feel it in the characters, the way they act, the way they think, the way they talk. I really enjoyed this film. That brings me into our fourth question. Is this film worth you watching? It's such an original sci-fi tale that I would be remiss to tell you not to go watch it. It is very bleak, but in a very beautiful way. You get to see the colors of life come through the bleakness. You feel new life as well as old life, decaying life. There's all of it, all visually just right at your forefront. But at the end of the day, it really hones in on the rebirth. So that leaves us with our decision. Should you get a ticket? Should you skip it? Should you get a ticket with a, just a bit of trepidation going into this one? No, drop the trepidation at the door. Keep your ticket with you. In fact, grab anybody and everybody you got that you can grab alongside you and go see this movie. It deserves to be seen in a movie theater. I can't say enough. It's beautiful. I loved it. I really loved it. And I think you will too. Tell me what you thought of Vesper down in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to support our channel, you could do so by clicking the like, the subscribe, that notification bell down there, and sharing this anywhere and everywhere you can. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you for Jamie over at Sidetrack, and we will see you in the next one.